What's up, everybody? It's Joe Lapuma. You are listening. You are watching the Complex Sneakers podcast. As always, I'm joined by my two guys, two co-hosts. To my right, Mr. Matt Welty. I don't know how those early morning news <laughs> people, like, they have, like, the 5 a.m. call times yeah. to, like, be on camera. Yeah. Because it's early today. Yeah. And this is rough. Well, you look great. Thanks. You look good. I'm, I'm two espressos in. I'm a mess because I, I know. Look, you just spilled just, to my right, left, right Mr. Brendan Dunn. Came on, I was fidgeting with my yeah. water bottle. Like, Listen, maybe not a morning s- person. He's a morning person. Waterfalls if you, over if here. Babs, it, yeah, he, if you want to zoom in a little, he spilled, spilled some water. Yeah, so. maybe somebody could bring me a paper towel or something. Can only go up from here, though. Monday morning, <sighs> Super Bowl. Super Bowl, yeah. Yeah. People were saying Super Bowl should be a holiday. How do we feel? Did you watch the Super Bowl? I did. My brother made some cauliflower queso dip it was oh, incredible yeah okay very good what was on the menu for i you? had i had I, I, I was snacks. actually offended by what happened yesterday at got the some paper towels here thank you isabel keep the, going sorry wealthy at the shindig i got invited to why food wasn't up to your Dude, standard it was high po- standards no it was wasn't pos- enough protein <laughs> no it was possibly the worst scenario ever Mini, so, mini hot dogs? No, show up to a house. What do you br- what'd you bring? <laughs> Getting notifications for our shoot that's after okay. this shoot. Um, yep. Show up and you get there and you never want to be mad that someone has food, right? So I'm not, I don't want to say. <laughs> but, but he is mad in a, in a public yeah, setting so right where, now, where putting you him bring on blast it? Did you bring anything? on your podcast. Come on. So what, what had happened was <laughs> that someone said that they were going to bring food and they go, I'm going to get all the food, just Venmo me after. Mm-hmm. That was like, okay. that was the, the way the thing was planned Mm -hmm. and we're in jersey city and we show up and there's about and if they want to sponsor this whatever go ahead but i'm going to throw this out there there was about like five boxes of pizza hut pizza okay Mm -hmm. um which is probably the most the worst pizza on the planet um so you're just you you, agree but you're disgusting on arrival and i go dude why did you i go why did you i go why did you order this pizza and and the the kid said the person hosting you I, dude, the person who invited you over to their house and it wasn't even it wasn't even his house. It was someone else who had come okay. and took okay. and took up the duty of ordering all the food. And I go, why did you order this? He goes, this is the direct line. There's no good pizza in Jersey City. Wow. And right there, you were obviously <laughs> extremely offended, incensed. And they said it wasn't enough pizza, so he ordered four more pizzas from Pizza Hut. Oh no. Did and you I eat any, say, dude, or did you abstain for? You I know? had to eat because there was no. F- I hadn't like eaten all day. But I thought it, you would have sat it out just on no, principle. No, dude, it was Pizza Hut. Your pizza's awful. But <laughs> okay. well, I know did they you pro- just say a message like six goes. minutes ago if they if they you know if they want to sponsor yeah, this or not happening? <laughs> not even six minutes ago, sixty no, seconds well, ago. I'm sorry, I had pizza and you wings. Pizza and wings. Wing stop. And not oh. raised. Not raised pizza. There it is. Not raised pizza. Classic. Shout out to the Albanian dudes and not raised. Really good. Love it. What about those commercials? Did you see Super Bowl commercial for Skechers with Snoop Dogg? That was, dude, that Oh, I'm uh, sad. I was going to make a comment about is that. that. That's the first Hold time, on, right? Though. Has, has Snoop on. been down with Skechers for a minute? I don't think so, but if anyone can make Skechers no. look cool. No. Wait, if anyone can, no, no, no. If anyone can making, it's Snoop Dogg. Want, I think, apologies for I Snoop Dogg here. maybe. Snoop Dogg will always be an Adidas guy to me. John Wexler wouldn't Chuck? let this happen, yeah, you know? Or Or Chuck's, yeah. Yeah, okay, but. I I was sad when I saw him in a in a sketch. Sketchers gives you a bag. You're not running through the Hawaii Absolutely rainforest. Sketchers nope. branded, but I think no. you will never see me promoting Sketchers. If 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 you did, the bag was no. Actually, you never will. Okay. On principle, I'm I'm putting it right here. Okay. I th- I'm not mad at I it. I think it was one of those Thank scenarios you. where it was like, remember uh, the Hurricane sneakers by Game? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those were actually like made by Sketchers. Hurricanes in store in November. Fuck yeah. Reebok. Three ten. I thought it was three. 310 yeah. motor. Yeah, but that it was like a sh- shell brand owned yeah. by uh, Sketchers. Classic. Should oh, they're Super Bowl. Yeah. Let's see the moment, you know, the Joe moment. Puma's influence. Right? No, but right? I got on. No. J- Jalen Hurts wearing Jordan 11s? I got, oh. N- oh, not that, but Yeah, sure. the actual players yeah, in yeah, the yeah, game yeah. <laughs> wearing some um, cool sneakers. But yeah, we were so- and Jalen Hurts, he had a great game. Aside from. What that fumble? That like yeah, lost but on he the had game. A, I know, he had a good, he had a good uh, game, but yeah, I think he was wearing. Jordan 11s and then switch to Jordan 1 PEs, but the that, real footwear moment. The real footwear moment. MM6 Solomon Margella. Rihanna at halftime. All red. In the Margella Solomons. Love. A shoe that Joe LaPuma co signed, I want to say months ago or a month ago, two months ago. Do you think you at all influenced no. Rihanna no. to wear the Solomon Margella sneakers? No, the but. Super Bowl? No, but. No. Rihanna doesn't, you know. Rihanna, she doesn't. 
ASAP Rocky, this program. Rihanna. They're in a Good. league of their own. Different world. Good. Different world. They're, do you, they, I don't know if they're watching the podcast. However, I do love that shoe. Yeah, just wait till Adidas signs her. Is that? Is Sorry, that, keep going. Keep okay. going. Okay. Uh, I do love that shoe. Did we think about getting the red one after? Uh, you know, I have the. No, I like the one you have more, the tan one. Okay. Great. Nice sneaker. And she wore Andre. Leon Talley's yes. red outfit. Yeah. Beautiful moment. Love and the performance. Pregnant. Love the shoes. Uh, Brian Diaz. From Solomon. Our was friend. in town this weekend. I Did anyone see him? No, I didn't. didn't yeah. Catch up we got to get him on the podcast, but I'm sure that he had a, his phone was going crazy. Do you know that someone created a fake Brian Diaz Instagram account? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I got I got hit up by them. They're like, hey, man. And it was like underscore. Fishing but, scam? And I was like, damn, he really made it if uh, he has fake accounts. You knew one. immediately it was a fake account? But yeah. yeah. All also, red. Also, there was another big Solomon moment this weekend, which was probably one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen in my life. Okay. Yeah, uh, more so, disgusting at, than the Pizza Hut spread. Oh, at yeah. the that's, Super Bowl it's, party. it's about close. Uh, at UFC, down under. Oh, people were tagging me in this. Yeah, shooey. Uh, yeah, but also we should put out there that Alexander the Great, Volkanovski, kind of got robbed a little bit. But oh, this is the UFC section. Either way, tied to Ivasa. Awesome. Um, I watched oh, that fight. Did you? On. Uh, yeah, but. I don't know. He he didn't lose anything by losing. Let's just say that. Yeah. How does that work? He 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 proved himself. Yeah. Took uh, a lot but, of losses. Never been a loser. So yeah. Shouts to <laughs> Big Body Vest. <laughs> <The laughs> sorry, king. sorry. Tai Tuivasa, the, the Shoey King. Yeah. Took a shoey out of a pair of Solomon's mm -hmm. that someone else gave to him. Mm -hmm. But Solomon's are like a kind of like not breathable shoe that like kind of oh. traps the sweat in, and like someone oh. else having like oh, a pair God. of like. Solomon's it's so like that. foul to even think about. But don't man. your feet feel a little sweaty when you take so the Solomon's on, or take them off? No. <laughs> I mean, I work out in Solomon's, so yeah. if you're going by that, yeah. It's like one of those sweat bags for your feet. Ooh. Yeah, but I Foot but sweat conversation. <laughs> that was dope to see the the, the red Solomon Margellis. Yeah, I love that. So much happening in sneakers right now. Do we want to go to another red? Should we get it out of the way? The mischief. Whole lot of red. Big red boots. <laughs> yeah. Wealthy. Mis you kind of like these, right? Well, Famous mischief hater. Yes. A man Go watch who that episode. Go podcast. watch that episode. They okay. are disrupting. Lucas Bentel, yeah. Listen, okay. you held From his mischief. feet to the fire, and then all of a sudden, Jersey City, you wore the Astro boots to the Super Bowl party. No, I did not. Okay. <laughs> That's a lie. I lied. Wealthy I lied. held I, their I, feet I to get the, the fire, exact... and now they're bringing the fire to Wealthy's there feet. There we go. With the mischief big red boots. I want to get the exact verbatim. Okay. Oh, you're gonna read, He's gonna your read one tweet? of his tweets. This is yep. this is a popular yep. no, segment no. on this show. Yep. 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 <laughs> yeah, I know, mean tweets, so I get... literally mean tweets. <laughs> I said, as many know, mm -hmm. roll the clip. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of mischief in the slightest, but I can admit their Astro Boy boots are cool. Mm -hmm. Not something people can wear, which I still stand by. Yep. But good design nonetheless. Much better lane for them to make fun stuff instead of trying to be edgy, mock sneaker culture, or try to get sued. Look at him. I think mischief works much better as like a Willy Wonka of shoes where okay. they're trying to create all this like wax. This is a weird owl. Yeah. Though, you like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All this all this just funky stuff. Like yeah. they did the gobstopper shoe. They yep. do the big red boots. The ATM was dope, even though not footwear, but But I feel like that's much more their lane mm -hmm. than You appreciate that stuff more it, than it, it just it makes more sense to who they are. Yeah. Especially meeting who they are <laughs> instead of like being like, oh, we're gonna like try and think we're smarter than sneakerheads and mock them by like making fake Air Force Ones that mm -hmm. are like too smart for Nike to sue us over. Yeah, it, you don't like the footwear satire stuff. That well, we just done. know that they're not the ones to be making it. Yeah, right. I love it because right? a little. Bit's I think we. Can, I think up. we can all. I know you're friends. I'm with not them. friends with them. I'm happy to be critical of them. Okay. I think this big red boot is a smart project. I do agree with you I, in that I think that the route of let's try and get sued or lol we can't get sued and that towing the line was getting a little bit stale so i'm happy to see them do something totally different with this but also i'm i like astro boy you're an astro boy fan yeah have the i think i don't I think you have it as well the yeah. bait big astro boy yeah figure. do you think that astro boy is the closest inspiration for yes. for these shoes because I, I messaged mischief and they didn't want to say that there was any particular one you know well, there was source all, there was also like people like go oh, door the explorer yeah the, the character's name's boots i think yeah but i think it's astro boy well the the, the door character i think was referenced in the press release well for what it's worth 
the CRO. Um, mm -hmm. I want to get who it. we had on the show. No, that's no. Go watch that episode, by the way. So Daniel Greenberg, the chief revenue officer mm -hmm. of Mischief. Even who, though they don't really like titles, I think they yeah. But also, that. he's the guy from his Instagram bio, at least that's at Mischief Sneakers. So I mm -hmm. feel like he's involved yeah. in that portion of the business as well. I chat with him. Um, mm -hmm. He he's was a fourth fourth he's, member of Mischief to our left, right here. No, I know. Yep. <laughs> go on. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you're like, oh, not friends. The guy texts them all the time. Yeah, oh he keeps saying God. go on. He's putting little anecdotes like, oh, I just happened to run to him at brunch. Yeah, in Brooklyn he did the wear last... testing oh, at Mischief. He in took Brooklyn. us to brunch in Brooklyn. Like yeah, you were he... on this podcast two weeks ago, bragging about your extravagant weekend in the hey, outer boroughs. Hey, this is the first time you think for he everything. Taking down the, pancakes. The boot on the low. <laughs> and shame Either on way, time. He, <laughs> he was walking down white. He was with at, big red boots on. Yeah, he was at uh, Cause's studio. Yeah, he's been with Cause I think on several occasions. Mm -hmm. But uh, you were upset by that one. Well, there was the cause astro boy figure mm -hmm. yeah standing right there mm -hmm. while he's where and he was doing the same like facial expression for mischief yeah yeah as the cause astro boy mm -hmm. so i mean and you didn't think that was cool or funny no i just thought that seeing them on him yeah was how everyone's gonna look trying to wear that should we read the tweet because he had a tweet about this one too bring it up we got nothing but time <laughs> were you were you as offended when i wore my oreo fours and had the little um oreo cookies dipping in milk oh you did that no <laughs> i didn't do that classic 2013 yeah era. i didn't do that here's said, another wealthy tweet mischief cro already ruined their astro boy boots what a shame <laughs> psa this is how you'll look wearing them time out that's a funny that's okay what is the time difference between your tweet that you <laughs> posted yeah that you posted giving them props and that okay this was <laughs> the first tweet was hold on the sixth at 7 47 which one p. was the first tweet Th that he just read that you liked them or that they were liked them. Them. Yeah, okay yeah. 7 40 the, the 7 47 uh on february 6th <laughs> the exact time stamp PM. february 7th <laughs> 127 p.m okay all right look less than 24 I feel like this hours is law and order. 127 p.m yeah, but bro. i will say one of the biggest stories in sneakers yeah obviously the year is still early but one of the biggest stories in sneakers reselling the last sale like on two thousand dollars stock x was almost a thousand dollars the asking price is some of these three grand i know that like you know if you want to judge by how popular they are it's a good indicator but these are we always talk about it these are one of the moments in sneakers a couple throughout the year that break through you start getting texts from family members yeah did you see these yeah. you get texts from my friend andrew who famously thought the green bean fives were spray for painted. some reason spray painted mm -hmm. on even yeah. though they're 3m are right. you going to wear the mischief big red boot well there was the uh there was the one viral moment where the guy couldn't get them off yeah yes yes <laughs> i have to say Mischief has more longevity in this footwear thing than I expected, but I'm interested to see to what extent people are actually going to try and wear these. Our friend Trinidad James brought him out at a fashion show this past weekend with, in the way that only he could, one of the Mischief big red boots on one foot and an Air Force One on the other foot. I just feel like if this is a thing you spent money on and you went out and bought it, um, are you going to actually wear this or is so, this just going to sit in your room on display like next to your well, car? Here's going to like the... be another thing. Sorry to interrupt. No, no. They're going to come back out for how they're going to have another whole way for Halloween next year. True. But Guaranteed. True. To me, it feels me more like Pac-Man costume. Yeah. See, you're already thinking bop, about bop, it. Bop, 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 it bop. feels like the footwear equivalent of a vinyl toy. Yeah. Like this isn't actually for wear. Right. And I we had a pair here in the office, but I didn't get a chance to try them on. Um, but everyone else in the office got a chance to try. Them yeah. On. Yeah. We actually had our own viral video. Yeah. Walking through Times check Square. That. But I, I want to actually feel how they feel on my feet because how functional of a piece of footwear is this? Well, there was one alliteration fit. accidental. Even did, that one. Did you see? I don't know who this is, but his Instagram is sober young Walter. Mm -hmm. I don't know who. I don't know who that is. <laughs> is I, that not your burner? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's um, not your he, burner account. No, I, I, actually, that's a French I, I follow him. I don't know. I, follow who, him. I don't. I, I just. I, I don't want. I just don't know who he is. Super stylish. When so he French wore. Montana no, I thought his name was Walter. Yes, of no, course. He, um, still comments. Oh yeah. So uh, <laughs> he wore. He got a fit off. Yeah, he he's super stylish. I don't know, Brendan. Um, okay, I'm not mad at that. Yeah. A little bit of Rihanna vibes. Uh, SGA wore him through the tunnel. You knew he would. He had the wavy jeans on, too. Yeah. You, you, they kind of look like the wavy baby jeans. Keep uh, it all mischief. Next jeans or sneaker shop, I'm going to be a little baggy. I'm a little, a little. Go for it. Yeah. We support you. Is Trinidad going to wear them for today's episode? I don't know. Very uh, possible. It's one of those. Th I'm starting to. The one thing that's disappointing about this shoe, though, is that. Is that he wore them in Cause's office? No. 
is that like you said like you see it and you're like oh that's kind of cool you know you just see it like it's clever just the actual shoe itself but then you, and you've never seen a shoe that looks like that before yeah right it, but then you it's like it, it's sort of giving me the vibes of like when you'd see a high fashion shoe for the first time and you're like oh that's cool and wonky but mm -hmm. then you actually see it like out in the wild getting worn and you're like okay like we can put that thing back for like mm. none of us have seen it out in the wild right I saw it in the office. Okay. I saw it like I guess up. they haven't properly released at the time of recording. I'm interested to know too, are we gonna see these? You know, if if I hang out no. in, in Soho on the weekend as I often do, am I gonna see somebody with them I on? I don't think so. What's the fit looking like? <laughs> yeah, I don't it's not my fit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so, but <sighs> man, it was a week that they took over. Yeah. They took over. Kudos kudos to mischief. More of a marketing company. Can't put than that a in uh, AI you know. Chat GPT. Can't put those in. Can Wait, <laughs> Joe, do you think um, G Chat GPT could never? Do you think the the calves could make it through the no, no, through the top? No, uh, uh, no, yeah, because I had I had baggy jeans on and I tried to uh, this weekend. Mm -hmm. I had to lift up to let them know. Yeah, I had to lift up the. I couldn't. I couldn't lift up the baggy, baggy jeans, jeans guy, yeah. yeah but I'm get, they're getting baggier okay, i couldn't even lift them up the, so yeah so no that's that's an aside but those wouldn't it wouldn't work i i mean i would probably be trapped in the office if i tried to wear those in the and couldn't get them off <laughs> the mischief boots yeah <laughs> you would call to your doorman like hey can you come up and help me yank these things off <laughs> oh shoes we're wearing yes sir let's go uh these are Shout out to good guy, UA Wu, designer of New Balance, Refined Future. Not the protection pack. Not the protection pack. How dare pack. you? You better not call it the protection pack. He will be at your door. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But he designed um, or he brought these back, mm -hmm. worked on the product. These are the New Balance 610 V1. I like those. Yeah, I like these shoes. So what you got on? Uh, travel day for me. I'm heading to Atlanta. We're doing the Kiwi Lorenz OG custom. He put the uh, oh, I didn't realize that was a Lorenz. Yeah, Kiwi Keaton. He put the Kiwi colorway over the Denham. But even though you know I'm allergic to Kiwi, oh, are you? I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. I'm sorry. Let me just take these off and throw. Yeah, he. Uh, sorry, like bring out. Yeah, Den he he put he did his uh, custom colorway yep. over the Denham nice. 95s that we love. By the way, a quick note. I, I realized we pronounced it wrong. It's Cortez, I think, Ooh, not Cortez. That's for embarrassing. The, oh, people for the were, Nike pe collaboration. People were getting in us about that's that. I, that's not, I'm sorry. That's not a brand I've ever heard anybody talk about in real life. I've only ever seen it on the internet. So I, it looks like it's spelled Cortez. I don't know, man. But, you know, we make a mistake, we address it. Yeah, you know, we, we move address on. it head on. Maybe I made a mistake here. I know Welty's going to address it. I'm wearing the Stussy Nike Air Max 2013 the hemp colorway. Welty? One another shoe that Brendan Dunn infamously not maybe not oh, on this program what, but didn't like it and now likes didn't it? like it yeah of course I knew he, that's where uh, he is was it, going can you imagine that somebody would if ever you, change their mind about hey, something? let me tell you something you ch if you change your mind he just appears like he beams to wherever you are <laughs> he just appears could be anything <laughs> this yeah. is the guy that couldn't appreciate the big red boots for more than twenty four hours <laughs> exactly totally did a one eighty like you're me allowed and a mini to change Cooper. your mind you're allowed to change your mind but I, I think, can't switch up no well you can. But I feel like I feel like, and this is you're making me realize it. Mm. This is where, um, that that comes from me is that I feel like often in the past I've liked things, mm -hmm. and I get hated on for liking things from yes. the beginning. Yeah. So when I express an opinion of liking something, and people are quick to jump on me and try to shoot me down for mm -hmm. saying I like something, when people tell me they don't like something and then come around to it. It feels like the 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 yes. mirror image yes. of that. Yes. You got all the receipts. I know a exactly what you're talking about. There's a lot of people. No, I mean, I'll, I'll give him. You know, we could crack some jokes, but like, there's a lot of people wearing all the Adidas sneakers that Wealthy liked seven years ago. I mean, there's a lot of fashion guys in the mix right now who are who made, on those same exact. There shoes. There was actually a lot of uh, internet accounts who, if you go through the receipts, were actually trying to make fun of me on Twitter a lot. Who are now posting all archival photos of all that stuff and saying how cool it is. Wow, this is 100 percent true. And you know That's what? It's because you have a dis you have a distinct taste. That's why. You oh, know, I know, our it's... famous one is when I said the Calabasas Adidas was better than the Wave Runner. <laughs> he, looked at me, he looked at me like I had two heads. And you know what? Oh. He was right. One, Calab one, 
Yeah. One of the ones I've been seeing, and this is the last thing we could talk about it before mm-hmm. going on, is that Your I've influence? Been, no, no, no. I've been seeing it. <laughs> we with could the, talk about with that more. The, no, it's funny with the Rihanna Solomon thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Solomon's having a moment, and we can all agree that Solomon's having yeah. a moment. But it's same thing with New Balance too. At this point, I feel like the brands are having a moment, but there's a handful of people out there who like just want to stick to wearing like Jordans and Nikes and just the traditional like sneakerhead shoes. Mm-hmm. And they don't want to give like the credence to these brands having a moment. So mm-hmm. when these things pop up, they're like, "No, we're not. Solomon's not cool. We're not going to talk about." Really? It. Yeah, I've been. See- I don't I, see that. I've been. I, I, I gotta know it. what you mean. I've been getting my people don't even want to like give any sort of like nod that Rihanna wore Solomon's. You see like, the Ar- did you see the Arthur cars from last year? Did you see these Margellas? People are like, Solomon. "Oh, really? You're going to talk about her shoes when she's pregnant?" I'm like, "Listen." I run a oh, sneaker blog. I don't run a pregnancy blog. Like, yeah. Is this another tweet of yours? No. Two different, oh, okay. two different <laughs> I wasn't things. Sure. I wasn't sure. Obviously, the Solomons are a little less significant than that. But yes, Solomon crushing it. Yeah. What else? What is next? Is there? There's so much to talk about. I know. I know you have. Can, I, can have. I give a brief? Listen, anytime, sometimes I'd be glancing over. <laughs> you can Sometimes see my notes on my phone. Over, he, 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 I don't the know if it's, va- I don't know if it's vanish mode, but the background's always black, and you just see a, 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 a wall bunch of, of white text. <laughs> He's got Pacer but, pulled up. Yeah, oh. a bunch of white text. No you updates know? on Pacer, but I do want to talk about Bape and Nike real quick, if we can. Mm-hmm. Okay, something. Well, yeah. I mean, just, just some more background on this. So I had mentioned on here that, and I think we talked about it, that I had a theory that maybe since Hiroshi Fujiwara was a mentor to Nigo, who founded BAPE, and Hiroshi has a close relationship with Nike, that it was possible that he protected BAPE from litigation from Nike, you know, and up until, you know, some point, you know, Nigo left the company in 2013. And originally, I thought that timeline was plausible, you know, even though I've since learned that Nigo and Hiroshi have an icy relationship and apparently haven't been cool with each other for like 20 years now, which is news to me. But I, I still thought maybe before knowing that it's been that long because like they were in a photo shoot together as of 2009. And oh, they were. What that's was I, I, I'm, I can't remember, but like that was around the time that in the lawsuit Nike says they approached mm. Nigo. <laughs> Did you get this information last week? Yeah, I think so. I know exactly where it came from. <laughs> so. I'm told by a few people who would know that that they've been not friends for even longer than that. And there's this old bait profile from 2007 from this, this Condé Nast portfolio where Hiroshi is kind of dissing Nigo. He, he, the quote is, I wonder how he feels when he sees ugly people wearing his clothes. If you go to the countryside in America and people are wearing bathing ape, that's not very cool. And then Hiroshi says, I thought he was more like us, but he changed. Wow. And people even suggested to me, and this is the first time I've ever heard of this, but incredible people that once upon a time, you know, 20 years ago or something like that, that Hiroshi blocked Nigo from working with Nike. I know it sounds crazy. I, I want to know more about that. I don't know anything else other than, you know, it's just, a bold just claim. that right there. But yeah. Is this like the New York Times issuing the correction? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I just like this history is so interesting to me. And I, I, I think a lot of it isn't very public. So I've been trying to talk to people who would know. And also, I, I think we forgot to mention last time we went super deep on Bape and Nike is that Joe was doing the big J journalism around the stuff in 2008, I think it was. He talked to Nigo back then about the knockoffs. He talked to Tinker Hatfield back then about the Bapesters. You know, Joe Puma was out here getting quotes. Appreciate it. I actually got a chance. I don't want to mention it. I actually got a chance to meet Nigo for like two seconds. Really? really? At, uh, the Uniglo pop up? No. Um, he did. Uh, it was his first. Remember when he did the the original Nigo Adidas collection when it was like Pharrell, Nigo, and Kanye when they all got signed. Originally? Okay. Like people forget that Nigo had a. I know he did. It like wasn't the, a human made thing. No, it was. There was like a, a Nigo Adidas collection. Vaguely remember all it. the shoes I thought were super cool, but it was all like archival Adidas stuff. Yeah. Um. There was. Either Another way. thing you were eight years early on, yeah, I guess. But uh, there, it, I thought it was cool, but it didn't it didn't uh, translate uh, pop culturally to mm-hmm. mainstream. But he did some they did some sort of event where he was there at the uh, the old Adidas original store on Green Street. Yep, yep. In classic location, Layla Fatar, mm-hmm. the old Adidas PR person, mm-hmm. um, was like, "Hey, do you want to meet Nigo?" I'm like, yeah, sure. That's so awesome. And they had like his lookbook, and he just, I walked up to him, and he like signed it for me. And I still have it at my oh, house. That's was, awesome. he, was he kind to you? Is it a cordial meeting? He Did said he make like, contact? He, he said two words. What were the words? <laughs> I, I don't remember. He's like, 
thank you. <laughs> and then, like, he just <laughs> awesome. moved right on. Um, the quote, just real quick while we have it. This is Nigo to Joe LaPuma in 2008 when Joe asked him about Bape knocking off Nike. Nigo said, I never read the blogs, so I don't even hear the criticism about us doing Nike takeoffs. I'd like to say the other brands doing Bape knockoffs shows that the brand is recognized and desired. But in reality, it's really annoying to have to deal with. Yes. Complex. That was a complex column where basically it's set up in contradictions. So the it, it was like yeah classic magazine column where they're – it, it's like um, you say something and then you like usually say but. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I remember that. And Tinker Hatfield. Tinker same Hatfield. Year, said, that quote, was it's a, certainly a form of flattery. Yes. To, to Co- Joe Puma. We could correct Must me if, credit. We correct me if I'm wrong on this. I believe on the Paul Middleman episode mm-hmm. of our podcast, he had said something along the lines of he didn't understand why Nike just didn't hire Nigo to do the Air Force Ones at the time because he was like doing way cooler stuff. I think you're right. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. That sounds like a. That that sounds. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and then the Nigo Atelier in Tokyo, which was wow, one of my favorite. <laughs> in response ever. to your story about no, no, meeting not, Nigo for two I'm seconds and hearing two words from him, Joe flexing. brings up yeah. a video where Flex. he uh, not, spent hours inside Nigo's personal archive. Yeah, I'm looking not, at his hundred year old no, yeah. Levi's artifacts. Yeah, I'm not flexing, but I just no, heard, no, no. Uh, I'll flex me on it. No, I'm not. I'm not out, out no, flexing. Do it. Um, but. I just want to find <laughs> where, like, at the end of it, uh-huh. going through everything. The, the Go thing watch that, this video on YouTube. Yes. Yeah, so we're going through it, and he has, like, the Carhartt, I think, original Stussy, that yeah, yeah. jacket, that hidden always post. But um, we're going at the tail end. From like, Union, right? Yeah. yeah. We're, at the tail end, uh, he's showing the jewelry, and he just um brings out the AP watch, and it's flooded, almost bust down. And he just is like, the diamonds are factory. <laughs> like they're not they're yeah, not yeah, added yeah. like an aftermarket thing. yeah so yeah incredible stuff take that wealthy <laughs> no no <laughs> uh you know what might be the biggest flexing shoe of the year if i could force in a seg here tiffany air force ones mm, you're coming around on them no, no right no. okay so real quick though since since our last episode mm-hmm. The friends and family sample came out. Which is even worse than the... Okay, so here's what I said. I I, agree. Listen. Yes, Nico gave me the quotes. Yes, Tinker gave me the quotes. (laughs) Uh, But listen, I'm not not patting myself on the back again. But what I I would say is, I think I posed the question. People are saying, oh, a black suede Air Force One with the Tiffany swoosh underwhelming. And I was like... That ain't it. And I said on this podcast a couple weeks ago, well, would you rather like all over Tiffany color up. And it's worse. It's worse. Well, you just played Would You Rather with Tiffany Air Force Ones. No, that's what, just... no, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So like, this is worse. Yeah, I agree. Than the black suede with the Tiffany swoosh. So I would love to like see some mock-ups. Go in MS Paint tonight when you get home, okay? <laughs> this is a challenge. Here's a homework assignment. Go in MS Paint. Or just go on Nike ID and just try. Okay, fine. Listen, I'm showing my age. MS Paint and mock-up because I want to see. Send us some bit too much Tiffany, too, too much Tiffany um, colors. You damned too if little. you do. You damned if you don't. But I agree. I, I, That's what I, I agree I was that saying. the, the blue, Tiffany blue one, the, the friends and family version is worse. I still don't think the black one is any good. Okay. Uh, our, our friend PG... As, as it, what the, did he have to say? He, I, as I, I do say a lot of times that he makes a lot of really bad uh, Nike ID Air Force oh, Ones. You <laughs> said that. Yeah. No, I told you. I don't mention that to me. He's wasted a lot of money. Yeah, really? He just makes the most like simple, basic, like, oh, I'm going to do a Supreme colorway on the Air Force Ones. Simple man. Uh, but he, oh, it, it's funny because he's known to do that a lot. But he even said that friends and family Tiffany looks like a Nike ID that got returned to the outlets. Wow. Yeah, the other thing, you know, you're talking to people. I'm like, what do you think about the Tiffany Air Force One? Kind of like just like dipping my toe mm-hmm. and like, oh, like you know, yeah. gauging. And everyone just says the same thing to me. Of course you like it. You like black sneakers. Yeah. I will say, to me, the Tiffany like Air them. Force One is kind of on the level of what you were mentioning earlier of this pop culture shoe where everybody knows about it. I was at a random mm-hmm. dinner last week in Palm Springs and this guy who – flex knows nothing about sneakers and is not involved in shoes at all, asked me, what do you think about the Tiffany Air Force Ones? And I was kind of surprised that it's already on that level of kind of like a trending topic. Also, I feel like 
this is the villain sneaker for 2023. I think every year you need a villain mm -hmm. sneaker, a sneaker that people love to hate. I can't exactly pinpoint off the top of my head what it was in 2022, but the year before that, it was the Trophy Room Air Jordan 1. It was the shoe that people would bring up any time to get their blood boiling. And to me, the Tiffany Air Force 1 is this year's version of that. And I saw them in person. That's that's a good point. I saw them in person uh, last Wednesday. I, okay. went, I went to dinner. Uh, you brushed the suede on it? No, I didn't brush the suede. The guy who was wearing them, uh, Andrew from Sinclair Global, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, he had them on. Did they look okay in person? Yeah. yeah. I, the Tiffany Air Force Ones to me feel totally vapid is, is still the problem. I just don't think there's any legitimate connection there. Also, some guy online, I, I don't know this person, and it's I'm not trying to like take shots, I just want to correct the record a little bit, was saying there were only a thousand pairs. That's definitely yeah. not the case. There's going to be plenty of these. Uh, uh, Obviously, it's going to be a limited sneaker to some extent, but a thousand is absurd. The neighborhood Nike retail accounts that get the good shoes, they're going to get these. Confirmed? Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Are we see going to see another friends and family? Um, uh, Maybe? Uh, I don't want to say. Uh, who knows by the time this episode comes out? Yeah. Okay. We have to talk about, though, Alexander Arno wearing these sneakers, the Unco Tiffany Air Force Uncool sneaker moment of the year. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. The Tiffany Air Force One, LeBron James was the first person to wear it. That makes total sense. With the sense. jacket. With the Settlemeyer jacket, custom jacket, love them. LeBron brings the sneaker out. It looks good on him, reasonably. And, and it makes sense because he's a top-tier Nike athlete. He's a guy who you want associated with a yeah, shoe like this. Sense. Right after that, at the Lakers game that night, Alexander Arnaud, who's a executive vice president at Tiffany, and whose dad... Nepo baby? <laughs> Bernard Arnaud. Bernard Arnaud is... You the know, richest man in the world. Founder and CEO of LVMH, richest man in the world. And you have his son courtside at the garden wearing the Air Force Ones, making them look awful. You can tell if you zoom in on the photo that right. he doesn't know that much about the Air Force One as a shoe. Because if you wear Air Force Ones yeah. on the regular, you know to take a half a size down. Yeah, he He's got all this room. Pointed out. Yeah, there's like in, the, in, in the, the heel. heel. He's got the blue laces on, you which guys, just look bad. Uh, and, listen, and, you look, guys are right, but also, oh, God, I saw he, you zoomed the, in on the, the heel. God Punks forbid I do PJ anything. Chain. Listen, thank, <laughs> God forbid I do anything. P, he zoomed that went in. off, though. That went off making, yeah, it, making went the off. joke. He zoomed in on the heel because he had just, the little room. I just room. feel like this is the wrong guy to associate with the shoe. I feel like Nike did good things during the rollout, but why do you want this he's young like, man he, who's the son of like the richest guy dibs, in the world like he, like it's like he, a power that's thing. associated with this sneaker? That's not cool on any level. That's so profoundly uncool, it's especially the way he, he made super them look. Super skinny, super skinny black jeans. Come on, on. he looks like if a fucking Swedish tourist on Mulberry. <laughs> if you go through the slack, Arno family, please don't have geez. me murdered. <laughs> if you go through, the, I, I, if you go through the slack, we were like, who's yeah. the first two people to get him? I think Ben said LeBron, uh -huh. and I said, uh, I said him. It's just not he's cool. in the mix. I know that he has all the access in the world. Again, his dad's the richest guy in the world. But th that's not what this is about. This is about finding the cool people that Nike is aligned with to roll these projects out. Damn. I listen. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it's not cool. But you have your thoughts. There's all, there was also, a, and I don't want to say too much, but there was a goofy moment, <laughs> maybe a year ago, where he had posted. Someone had asked him on Instagram if Tiffany should do a Nike shoe, on like those ask me. Uh, the ask me questions. And yeah, he had, on his IG story. And he had posted the the diamond dunk. Saying, "Oh, should we retro these?" Mm. I miss that. But then, no involvement with the person who made the well, shoe. Well, let me tell All you right. something. Project Blitz, I believe, will clear it. Text Croatian, probably who what knows up, where he is. Project Blitz did an Instagram. You know, I have a photo, not yeah. photogenic memory, yeah. but maybe honestly, yeah. <laughs> they did last week a group of Tiffany Diamond Dunks. Yeah, well, they also... And you just look at them, and once again... Beautiful. Did you guys see that photo? I'm going to show it to well, you they right have... now. Oh, by the way... I'm going to show way, it to you right now. Joe, was it the baby Tiffany dunk you were asking me about? Yeah, hold Drew on, hold on, hold back. on. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> this is so much... This is Babs, so we'll, put it in, we'll put it in here. But just look at this. Yeah. Look at this. If you're listening, oh, okay. turn the YouTube on Project right now. Project Blitz, February 5th. Talk look about Rihanna. This. Shine bright like some diamonds. I wish I didn't get well, rid of my baby. Look at this, and we'll put the photo in there. Dre, Dre and Nick, great mm -hmm. friends, and yeah. not to bring it up again, but they had all those on Com display at Complex. Con. Yeah, of course, <laughs> brought the SB back. But uh, the only thing is, I've been trying to get a fit for the Tiffany Dunks, and mm -hmm. I, I probably can't get figure it, just, it out. I can't figure Let's it out. Let's put together a mood board, black and oh, white deck, just a black T-shirt, white T-shirt maybe, because I want to wear them on an episode of Sneaker Shopping very soon. But you know which episode? Obviously, we won't say it, but you have an episode in mind. 
What if you redo? Not yet. What if you redo the Tiffany kid fit? That no. would be amazing. That would be uh, iconic. Time out, though. Well, what if they Maybe had the Tiffany this. kid time roll out. out the Air Force no, One? That would no, be a clever, no. like, sneaker culture moment where, you All know, it's like, aside. we get it. Instead of the actual Tiffany yeah. kid whose dad is the richest yeah. man in the world. <laughs> All kidding aside. Why don't <laughs> He's you, a real <laughs> Tiffany kid. Yeah, but why don't, you do a so, why don't you do a story on him for real? They did, uh, they already did Sneakers one. did. Uh, for the, they, did, they found they him. Did. Last uh, Tiffany. Sorry, not Tiffany. Diamond. Diamond. Yeah, that's the funny thing, too, that we didn't mention before. Never forget the period when... Tiffany and Diamond. Co. would send out cease and desist type warnings if ever you worked at a sneaker blog and you mentioned the word Tiffany in association with the Diamond Dunk, which is an allusion to well, they Tiffany. they also sued Diamond itself. I think Nick talked about it on our podcast, you know? Yeah, this is a... It's like, how do you sue the brand who, like, gave you the, the blueprint to make this shoe? And then the owner's son is like, hey, should we retro the shoe? It's like, well, maybe you sh- you're going to retro the shoe that your father's brand sued him over making? Like, what world are we living make in? Make it make sense. Okay. Passionate guys. Another thing that happened uh, that week of the Tiffany rollout was Heineken kind of got in there and Heineken made an Instagram post that kind of was pretending like maybe there was a Heineken-Nike collaboration happening. Obviously, Heineken is another one that has some history with Nike SB in that, like Tiffany. Sued Nike. Yeah, or, or there was some legal dispute. I don't know if they actually filed suit. You yeah, know? but, but um, you know, there's a... Nike SB Dunk Low and the Heineken colorway with the star on the back. They, they had to kind of cancel the release or release them quietly. And now, as Tiffany's rolling out their Air Force One with Nike, Heineken gets in there and does this cheeky IG post suggesting that maybe there's a Nike Heineken collab. I don't know for sure that there's not a Nike Heineken collab, but people I've talked to said that's not the case. Um, there's a Nike SB Dunk coming up, an inline pair that I think it's kind of a reverse of the original Heineken colorway. And I think that's where some people got confused and maybe jumped out the window and thought, oh, it's actually happening. And Nike SB commented, said not SB. Yeah, which again, like just thinking about how Nike rolls out projects, if in fact there were an actual Nike Heineken collaboration coming out, the rollout of it wouldn't begin with Heineken piggybacking off a Tiffany IG post with a jokey image about making a pair like that's just not how that would work if there was really a nike heineken collaboration again i don't know 100 percent sure that there isn't because you can't really prove a negative but this is my wall of text um <laughs> i see th- it wouldn't it wouldn't start like that the nike sb account wouldn't be dropping random hints in comments on instagram so i don't think this thing is happening i think heineken probably wants it to happen i you know does nike even collaborate with alcohol brands like that like would that ever you know is there is there history of nike ever doing a actual beer shoe in collaboration with a liquor brand or a beer brand i don't th- you know think i don't so. i don't think i mean Heineken they've done Nike a bunch of beer inspired yeah shoes. yeah sb stuff newcastle dunks paps yeah uh so I, that's my that's when my i spiel. saw that shoe the joke in my head was you know it's like we have mcdonald's at home and then yeah. it's like you see it it's Which like shoe? the heineken the heineken shoe right the, yeah. the inline yeah. looking pair. Oh, I don't even think that pair that's floating around that you're talking oh. about. That because that's a Nike Sportswear thing. I think yeah. there's an SB oh, Heineken okay. dunk coming out later in the year. I'm Got told. You. We're going deep. That looks like a reverse Heineken thing. Any more news on the Black Cat Four SB? Is it happening or it's definitely? What about not what about uh... every week? It, every week they tell me <laughs> it's happening. This guy tells me no. Well, the the, the Black Cat moment that we have to talk about was is LeBron breaking the all time Kareem Abdul Jabbar's all time scoring record, mm-hmm. but his two sons sitting mm-hmm. courtside in Air Jordan fours, and was it Bronny that was? Yeah, Bronny. Bronny wearing Black Cat fours. Black Cat fours. Did you influence that? <laughs> <laughs> also, Adonis, Drake's son, I yeah. think, had Black Cat 4s in the, Incredible stuff. In the uh, Caleb Presley Sunday conversation. Yeah, the Barstool interview. Yes. Did he, Did you influence that? No. So humble. Great shoe, though. Great shoe. If you're LeBron mm-hmm. and you're about to break the record of, I mean, you're about to break Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's record, would you be, like, upset that your kids are wearing Jordans on no. the sideline and not LeBron shoes? They're both wearing Jordans? Yeah. Nah. I don't think so. I do so. think that... I would have planned it out a little bit more. Tiffany uh, Air Force Ones? Absolutely not. My children will never. My children wow. will only have the Diamond Dunks. Wait, I'm sorry. One more shot on that. We we ignored yes. it for a second. You asked me on here about the baby Diamond Dunks that they have at True to Y and how much they were. Yep. Um, it took me a while to get a response, but the good folks at Truist did get back to me. They originally said not for sale, right? Well, I think he said that they, they weren't around. He, he, he gave me a price. 
Welty, how much do you think Truest Hawaii is selling the baby Tiffany dunks for? And this shoe never released. $4,500. It's a lot more than that, buddy. Keep going. Seven grand. 25000 That's what he told me. And I'm going to... And he threw me a shotgun. And he, he told me that... He John from me, Truist would give me a discount. Yeah, he told me <laughs> last night what the price was. Um, and we're going to put the picture in that I responded to him with. <laughs> 25 grand. Can't do it. I said, can you do 24? <laughs> you know what? Maybe I'll get the, the baby at Tiffany Air Force Ones instead. Okay. <laughs> Alexander will help you with that. <laughs> oh, what? The Nepo baby Air Force Ones. <sighs> what oh. else? What else? Um, Adidas is hiring Nathan Van Hook. Oh, big, big news. Big news. Nathan Van Hook. Nike guy who was big Nike guy. For Easy 12 two years. Yeah, designer of the Air Easy Two. Designed a lot of cool Nike sportswear shoes. Later on, did some cleated stuff. Nike training, Nike global football, the soccer boots. He then he went to Montclair football. Yeah, you know it, it's really interesting, and this is speculation. And like we said a couple weeks ago, or maybe this last episode, I think it's important to to note when you're just speculating. I I wonder too if like he was just waiting it out to come back to to just like keep yourself busy in the meantime. Yeah, you know because. You can't just go straight from Nike to Adidas or vice versa. These brands have big non-compete clauses and contracts where you have to wait a little bit if you're going from one to the other. Mm -hmm. So you're not, um, you know, bringing trade secrets or anything like that. And I, I, I wonder if that was Nathan Van Hook's plan all along. I don't know. But yeah, so he left Nike at the end of uh, 2020. You know, there was a lot of restructuring happened around that time and then went to Montclair to become their head of footwear designed the Montclair Trail Grip shoe, a shoe that I like a lot, and I had so interviewed him about that. Collaboration on. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And now uh, we just published a scoop last week of he's being hired by Adidas to be their new VP of uh, design for their basketball footwear. Which Jerry Lorenzo previously was doing. Yeah, I mean. Ish, ish. Yeah, and, you know, like this, this hire, I think, kind of speaks to the weird place Adidas basketball is in right now where when Adidas first announced Jerry Lorenzo a couple years ago, the vision that they put out in the press release was that Jerry Lorenzo and Fear of God Athletics were going to lead Adidas basketball. Nothing has happened. I we haven't gotten anything. And so to me, for them to bring on Nate Van Hook, it kind of suggests like maybe that this is part of the remedy for the fact that Jerry Lorenzo hasn't put out any it, Adidas product, you know? It makes more sense to me. Like, obviously love Jerry, uh, like his brand, like what he stands for, good mm -hmm. guy, all, all of that. But I've, I think I've said from the start too that I feel like He's much better as like a collaborator, mm. just because what we know of his design process, where he doesn't really like to work on, you know, uh, timelines. Timelines. Where sneaker brands need that. Yeah, stuff. Or schedules or like he makes a lot of really great product, but when you work on something like basketball, yeah. and it's not all about making cool product, it's just yeah. about like making signature shoes and making diffusion shoes and like making shoes that you're going to sell at famous footwear and Coles mm -hmm. and Foot Locker and all that sort of stuff. It just, maybe it's not like the best fit mm -hmm. creatively. Um, but Nathan Van Hook has made cool stuff and like, but actual just like product guy yes. who's like used yeah. to being like, okay, I have like 12 shoes I have to make for spring, summer, 2021, 20, you mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm going to hit that mark yeah i mean they need real design leadership if they're going to make adidas basketball impactful and i think nate van hook is a guy who can do that adidas basketball has been bad for a long time for a very long time yeah i think that they've tried so many different things and i just remember you know being younger and going to all the previews and like they would really put so much effort into it and they had these great signature athletes just bad shoes and it just seems like it never turned the corner and that's why when like bringing in jerry it mm -hmm. was really exciting and now maybe nathan and jerry are cooking up i wouldn't be surprised somebody another long-term industry designer uh hit me and about the news about Nate and he was like, oh, he's going to go crazy. Like we need this. The industry needs this for for a guy like Nate Van Hook to show up at Adidas and really put out a bunch of cool stuff, you know, to, to make things interesting again, to give Nike some competition to make Funky. I feel like that Adidas was the problem basketball that, a contender. You Adi know what? I, Adidas is that a lot of their basketball shoes just look so like uniform mm -hmm. where they like literally just felt like uh, like 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 uniforms. Yeah. Like like performance product that was just like. This is for this athlete. This is for this. Mm -hmm. in where instead of you were actually creating footwear in sneakers that like had some sort of unique details to them, mm -hmm. like I can't tell you the differences between any of those Adidas shoes. I can't picture any of them in my head and be like, "Oh, that's 
Donovan Mitchell shoe. That's Dame Lillard yeah, shoe. Yeah, you but couldn't you know pick him out need? of the lineup. We need uh, Jerry Lorenzo, Nathan Van Hook, Anthony Edwards, Adidas signature sneaker. Yes, please. I think the timing of this Be is fire. all very interesting, too, and it suggests that things just aren't quite going right at Adidas basketball. I mean, if you remember in December 2022, they put out that uh, campaign. What yep. is it called? Remember the Why? Is that what mm-hmm. it was called? Yeah. Um, and, and Jerry Lorenzo had to make a statement about how he wasn't affiliated with that campaign at all and kind of distance himself from it but if you look at the apparel in that it looks like very much his stuff it looks like essentials for adidas it looks like what a fear of god adidas collaboration is and if you actually go on the adidas website and search like uh, basketball crew neck and you come up with these images that again look like what you would expect jerry lorenzo to do in adidas and i'm told that some of that stuff he was involved with but is rolling out without him associated and if you look at those models the, the shoes they have on feet, it's this Adidas Rivalry Low that I think was originally connected to him, but they can't call it a Jerry collaboration. Yeah. And that um, that Kobe-type shoe, they haven't finalized yeah. the name yet. I don't think the style code is HQ6140, but I think that's another one that was attended. People tell me for Jerry Lorenzo's Adidas line, but he didn't approve it, but they're still going to release it anyway. It's funny, too, because if we can, ro- we can roll the tape back, I think mm-hmm. I actually predicted that Rivalry Low. Is sure. that right? Yeah, on here, where I was like, you need Jerry Lorenzo to go in the archives and find a 550-esque shoe. Yeah, the rivalry low is that exact shoe. There's, there's one on the Adidas and, and website the, right and now. And do the fear of God and do the fear of God treatment to it. And that's literally what that shoe is. Yeah, the, the style code, literally, go look it up, GZ2556. I'm told that this was a sneaker. Again, I haven't spoken to Jerry about this, mm-hmm. but was supposed to be for him, but isn't. But they're rolling it out anyway, and they are not calling it a fear of God Adidas sneaker. So I think that things are kind of shaky over there. You know, you would expect there to be some Adidas Fear of God Jerry Lorenzo product by now. Hopefully, hopefully by April we'll get something. Let's see. And hopefully Nate Van Hook's involved because I trust his vision a lot. I'm still excited to see that Fear of God at Adidas basketball. Yeah, I think the whole industry, I think the people who run stores and have shelves to fill that previously had Yeezys on them want some more Adidas product that yep. they can sell. Maybe they'll get some Yeezys soon. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot of easy news floating around. I didn't. I didn't think we'd be is back there? here. Yeah. I mean, I was getting added on Instagram yeah. about it, but yeah. I mean, there's this this shred of news that came out from this group called this thing called Secret Sauce Group. Not a, not a source I've ever heard of. I don't know anything about it, but they mentioned this thing saying Adidas has structured and proposed a new deal in an attempt to reengage Kanye West and Easy back into the fold. Just on the surface, reading that, I would think that that fake was news. fake news and. Uh, Again, I don't know anything about the source. You know, I'm not saying they're right or wrong. I just have never heard of them before. So, and you hear a story like that, and it sounds mm-hmm. fantastic and not true. But a couple people hit me in response to that information spreading around and said, "Yes, Adidas has been working on trying to figure out a way to do Yeezys with Ye again." Which, like, why? Like, I wouldn't, that's be, such I wouldn't a be bad surprised idea. if someone had like a discussion about it at the company. Mm-hmm. But I would be very highly doubtful mm-hmm. that someone sat down and structured out an actual contract okay. and had a meeting with Kanye West and was like, hey, Kanye, we want you back. This is what we're planning on doing. I just can't see that going right on any level. It's just so weird to like try to like denounce something and then all of a sudden be like, hey, you know what? Do you think there's any truth to that, though? I mean, I'm told by people that it is true that he, they're reengaging. Yeah, that they're they were trying to work on something. I don't I'd be surprised if it happens. And I think it makes them look weak as a brand to terminate somebody and then months later come back and say, hey, we realize we're going to lose a billion dollars if we don't sell this product. Let's let's get back together again. You know, um, this is I think partly related to Adidas just putting out this outlook for 2023, where they said this is a quote: "Should the company decide not to repurpose any of the existing Yeezy product going forward, this would result in the write-off of the existing Yeezy inventory and lower the company's operating profit by an additional 500 million euros this year." Which even like them saying they might not repurpose the product, it's like why not? Why not right. just put it on shelves? Like, I don't think people are going to be that mad at this that point, That was the right? original it plan, will still, right? It will still sell. Like, people won't be as excited about it, yeah. but the product will still sell. And that was the original plan. Uh, now, it was kind of unclear. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, like, what's the alternative? Destroy 500 million euros worth of product? Like, you're a company who allegedly cares about the environment, right? You can't do that. Like, and or, again, the, the stores want to sell this stuff. Or, like I said, the other alternative is always just to give it to people who actually need shoes in you the You think world. giant... Giant donation of Yeezys, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth. It's a interesting spot for them. Yeah, for sure. But it's like, what else are you going to do with the product? 
I don't, I don't know. Maybe they feel that it's more complicated than they'd originally um, thought. originally thought. Yeah, because there's this quote from a couple months ago where they're saying, look, we have the right to this stuff. We can sell it if we want. I think it was the last Adidas earnings call. I don't know. There's new leadership in there now. Maybe they feel differently, but I, I, I can't see them not selling it. Yeah. Like, why? What's? Do you think it's just a bad look for the brand? Is that why you don't want to do it? To, didn't you have a, didn't you think you had thoughts on that, that they maybe shouldn't sell them or, uh, or no? No, well, I mean, I don't remember exactly what the verbatim was, so I don't want to yeah. go into it. But it just it just felt weird that at some point that they were like, hey, we don't want to profit off of you. But then at the same time, we want to profit off of you, you know? Mm-hmm. Hey, it's not, a, it's not a lot of profit to walk away from. Anything just it's it's just weird brand messaging, you know. Yeah. Maybe we can get an Adidas exec on here to talk about it. You know, we just had Eric Glidke on the podcast. Maybe we can get some some current Adidas big wigs to to really break it down That'd for us. That'd be great. We need that. You know what else we need? We need some Nike. We need some Nike higher ups to come on here. Yeah, you let's know? do it. You know, Nike's always the brand that's like too cool for school. You know, come on, Nike. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Reebok CEO Todd Krinsky comes and sits with us. You know, John Wexler has done a couple yeah. interviews with mm-hmm. us. Right. You know, Eric Lickey, former Adidas brand president. Nike people, where are you? Where you know, John Hoke, you want to come chat with us? You know, Fraser Cook, John Donahoe, like Invite's Nike. Are you there. are you too good to talk to the people at Complex Sneakers Podcast? Like what? Wow. You know what is it? I oh, can, I'm trying to figure it out. Speaking of Nike, Air. Well, not that. The but movie? I know people, I had put it out there, but people had been wanting to know about it. Mm. Got the Tom Sachs shoes. Oh, oh, there you go. Did you wear them yet? Not yet. I wore them all weekend. The brown GPS? Yes. Ready to beat those. First sneaker purchase of 2023? Yes. Nice. Okay. They're good. I haven't put them on my feet yet. This is. You're going to wear them for a shoot? Uh, yeah, of course. But it's so funny sometimes when you, po- and I'm sure you guys get this, when you post a shoe that you got on that you had just received in the mail, mm-hmm. you post it like this, and then you get like someone being like, "How do? How are all the materials? How's the stitching? How does yep, it fit yep, on feet?" Yep, You're yep, like, "Hey, yep, yep. Sir, this listen, is a Wendy's. Listen, yep. listen. Mm-hmm. I just got the shoe. I think it yeah. looks cool. I took a picture of it. I yeah. have not looked at it in detail. Yeah, you I didn't have do not a wear test at the CrossFit box. Put, put it on foot yet? Yeah. In number three, with all due respect. Oh God. I just can't. I just. I just. I just. I just can't give you like a 500 word thorough review on the shoe just yet. I might put out a, something saying, "Hey, I like the shoe, whatever," but yeah. I can't give you individualized performance reviews. Really, on I shoes. feel like you should wear them and you should come back on this podcast. Next no, no, week that's fine. I'm saying, but I can't give everyone who DMs me yes a, a personalized like review of every single tidbit of a sneaker. Yeah, you're with all due respect. Man. No, yeah, that makes that makes total sense. Before we get out of here, we got to talk All Star Weekend, All Star Game this weekend. You're gonna be there? Not gonna be there, but in frigid Utah. Remember how classic the All Star sneakers were every year? It's just not that exciting. It's anymore, not that huh? anymore. What do you? What's your favorite All Star sneaker of all time? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Galaxy phone posits. I'll say, I'll say that I, I did never come close to owning a pair of Galaxy phones, but that was so uh, no pun intended, but meteoric. What about 2002? The Dada C dubs, Chris Weber, the Metallics. <laughs> that was you? Big finish line shoe. You had really? them. I didn't have them. You didn't spin them around? I didn't have but them, but I thought, I thought it was, I thought about buying them. We we got a crazy shipment of those at finish line. The black, all black metallic and all silver and metallic. And they were smoking? <sighs> or was it a, the sell through took a little longer? Yeah, a little. Okay. A little. But yeah, 2002. The All Star, the All Star game sneakers used to be such a big thing. Not not anymore. You didn't put the snap on spinners on your Jeep Wrangler back on the day? No. <laughs> I would have wanted rims though. Did you have a Jeep Wrangler? Yeah. No, I had uh, I didn't have a Wrangler. I had a Cherokee Sport Sorry. all silver. Yeah. <laughs> on brand. I'm a Mini Cooper guy, you know. And a boy. Not a boy. You're not gonna ask about my what, Mini if Cooper. You had rims? No, but like the little dice in no, the me, mirror. Me, like being a Mini Cooper stunt driver. I feel I feel like I'm surprised oh, going yeah. on in my personal life. I'm surprised. I forgot about that. I'm surprised Jesus. they let you do that. What? G- given your track record. Explain. As a he driver did. and as a passenger. Why? He's a, I mean, as a passenger, he had some <laughs> No, as a driver. I'm remember learning he, automotive journalism. He, um, a, a journalist. As he said, he did, a hit, he did a hit and run in a, oh, in a U-Haul truck. That was very early in this podcast history. <laughs> Why are you taking the it hit back and to run? That? I forgot about oh, that. No. So, I did not. Hold on. You can't just say on I a remember podcast that, that hundreds now. of thousands of people listen to that I did a hit and run and not but give some more context. 
What, you left a note on the person's car? I did not do a hit. And I was driving around in a U-Haul, and yes, we blasted somebody's side mirror off. I did not hit any people. I did not total a car. Like you that's, say, hit and run. That's such a vague term that could mean so much. But isn't hitting someone's car and driving off a hit and run, Joe? Yes, that's a hit and run. <laughs> so you did a hit and run. Hit and run. I just want the context, Walty. Is it crazy that? And I'm trust me, I'm not like trying to make light of a situation. But you, oh my god, did a hit and run in a car. And then a hit and run happened to you. No, the, the, no, a hit and run never happened to me. I thought the kid drove off. No, he was right there. Okay, he couldn't I the drive off. off. His Lexus was totaled, as was the Nissan Xterra I was in. Um, yeah, but through all that, through all the blemishes on my automotive record, I, <laughs> I was able to um, enjoy the Mini Cooper driving course out in Thermal, California at the Thermal Car Club. And uh, I learned how to drive stick. You see any of our friends out there? I know you're a master networker, or you just went straight press trip. Uh, more straight press trip. It's a good time. How's the Soho House? You gonna get a membership now that you hosted the event there? <laughs> I don't think they're ever gonna let you. Do you have a membership show? I do. Wait, uh, you say you only they're gonna let you back? Why? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I just also I, wait. What page? So wait, mm. you show up in the book. What yeah, context Jeff in Jeff book? Staples' book? Not, not just sneakers. Yeah, there's. I'm on page 171. Were you waiting in line for a release or something? No, it's at a panel he was giving extra at butter. Extra Butter. Yeah, yeah. and good I'm night. in the audience. Oh, okay. I went from the audience to the stage. Any good tidbits? Great tidbits. No, yeah. but is there any any stories that like um, from the panel that? Yeah, but you'd have to be there in attendance. I couldn't make it. Uh, was it recorded? I don't think so. Oh. You had to be there, Soho House. Our you friend, know who our, was there? You had to be a Chris member. Chris Vidal. Yeah, our, Chris, our guy Chris Vidal <laughs> hits me up. Barged in the door. Love it. <laughs> I can't get in the event. It was a good time. Anything else we need to address before we get out of here? Let's think about it. We got some fun guests coming up, right? We have some We have some yeah. execs, some, some brand higher-ups coming around. Yeah, so listen, it's just us for this episode. Soon enough, though. But we have some guests lined up, some People real, some, some real industry, yeah, movers with a and lot of history. Shakers? Yes, but again, I want to, I want a current Nike exec. Should we shoot for John Donahoe? You think they'll give us John Donahoe? Yeah, the shot's gonna look a lot like his at MSG, though. <laughs> Welties, <laughs> yeah, you know, gonna go a little. You you think know? John Donahoe can play basketball? <laughs> uh, think, yeah, I think so. Do you think you could beat him one on one? I bet John Donahoe would. Take you one on one, posting him up. Yeah, just I like don't think so. Yeah, you know, really? John, no, John, he, he would, and then you know, Nike CEO John Donahoe. You think you could take him in a game of one on one? I think, I think my my game plan. Would he might be, have played basketball at one point. He put you in I the post. He no. listen. All right, go ahead, go. My game plan on that, okay, is, and I'm totally fine with saying this. This is not how we get him on the podcast, but no. go ahead. <laughs> Get a little too like aggressive. In yeah, it. see, of come course. on. Look, fouling. Yep, like the you just blew the our over chance 40, to get Nike the CEO over forty on our league at Pier Forty, just fouling, but. <laughs> <laughs> but John Donahoe, let's get Mark Parker. Hold on, John Donahoe put you in the post, right? Back you up, and then just mm -hmm. do a layup, and then you know what he's gonna do the little Giannis <laughs> thing. The too small, he better run down the court. In he's Jersey a tall guy. City. He seems like a tall guy, right? In Jersey City, you gotta do the I feel too like small? I feel like with John Donahoe, you could just give him like an elbow to the back, dude. And then I'm trying to get this guy for a podcast. Gonna able, he's you're talking gonna, about how you're gonna, uh, he's gonna have him to up. forfeit the rest you're of the game. You're gonna rough him Listen, up. Yeah, you're not. You're he just no fouls. What about Mark Parker? You oh, think he, we could get Mark he's Parker? Definitely, yeah, he's definitely. He's, Joe found a photo he's of John dropping Donahoe. 25 and 10 on you he, easily. easily. He's putting up Josh Luber numbers. Yeah, <laughs> easily. You and your little, you bring up your little Knicks gear from the press trip. He's <laughs> John Donahoe is going to smoke you in a, in a game 101. Never know. What shoes are you going to wear to play? The Kawhis? Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. This is it. Straight hour. You're welcome. For your weekend listening. Hope everyone has a great weekend. Also, some housekeeping. Full Size Run is back. I'm sure you already watched it, but if you didn't, on this channel, oh, yeah. it's Complex. back this week. Yeah, we the moved Complex over. The Complex channel. Yeah, that's right. Make mm -hmm. sure you go watch that. That's right. The premiere. They're back in season. Complex podcast back in season. Are you in mid-season form? Sneaker shopping mid-season form. <laughs> we got some coming up. Well, he's going to be in finals form when he goes up against John Donahoe. You better be ready. You better be ready. <laughs> With the Beats headphones on. We got to get you with Lethal Shooter. <laughs> you know the guy? Yeah, we yeah, got to yeah, get yeah. you with Lethal Shooter. Listen, this has been the Complex Sneakers Podcast. We hope everyone has a great weekend. Please like, subscribe, hit the subscribe comment, button, right? comment, hit the bell, hit, the, hit, the bell, hit yeah, everything. Ding, right? Everyone have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. <laughs>